Hello everybody, this is Miss Kopak. Today we are going to read the last chapter in 26 Fairmount Avenue, Chapter 9. Can you believe that we are already at the end of this book? It has been so good and it's gone by so fast. I bet you probably have a good prediction about what's going to happen in this last chapter. If you remember in Chapter 8, it was New Year's Eve, so Tommy was celebrating the New Year. And now New Year's Eve is over. So what's going to happen next? We're going to have to read to find out. So make sure you have your book and your packet. If you need to pause the video at any time, you can press the pause button and rejoin me when you're ready. Before we read this chapter, I want to point out this word to you. You will see the word silhouette. And a silhouette is the outline of something or the shape of something. So, for example, in these two photographs, you see the silhouette of a man and the silhouette of a wolf. We can't see all the details like hair color or their eyes or their mouth, but we can tell what they are because we can see the silhouette. We can see the shape of them. So that is the word silhouette. Go ahead and open your book up to chapter 9. It starts on page 52. And you can read along with me. It says, everything was crazy. Mom and dad were packing boxes, packing clothes, running around saying, don't forget the clock. And which box does this go in? Here we are, Floss and Joe, some neighbors said, coming in the front door. Tell us what to do. Hi, boys, Uncle Charles called as he drove up in his car. Ready to go? We were going down to Wallingford for the day, so we wouldn't be in the way. We were moving, actually moving. I wanted to help. I wanted to see everything. But think what a big surprise it will be to see your new house all fixed up, Mrs. Crane said to me. Well, maybe she was right. And I could see that Mom and Dad had a lot to do. Spending the day with Uncle Charles and Mickey Lynch was great. Uncle Charles bought us comic books. We visited Cousin Mabel and her husband, Cousin Bill Powers. We visited Aunt Nell. She made us sandwiches and tea with sugar and milk for lunch. Is it time to go yet? I asked when we finished eating. Not yet, Uncle Charles said. We went across the street to Tom and Nana's grocery store and spent the afternoon helping them. I put cans of food up on the shelves. Now we're on the next page. Now can we go? I asked. It was beginning to get dark. Soon, Uncle Charles told me. First, we're going to have supper. At Tom and Nana's house, we sat in the kitchen, eating at the big kitchen table. It was covered with an oilcloth tablecloth that had pineapples and other fruit on it. When can we go? I asked. When your mom calls, Tom said. Tom read me one of my comic books, and I played with the special wooden blocks that were kept in the sewing room. Tom, Buddy, Uncle Charles, and I played Chinese checkers. It was already dark outside. The telephone rang. I jumped up. All right, Nana said. I'll send them on their way. Now we're on page 55. Buddy and I ran out to Uncle Charles's car. We picked up his girlfriend, Viva, and Mickey Lynch, and we were on our way. Through Yalesville, through Tracy, through South Meriden, on to Hanover Street. We turned up Highland Avenue. We drove up the long hill and turned right onto Fairmount Avenue. The lights were on by the front door of our house. We climbed the makeshift stairs. The real stairs wouldn't be ready until spring. There on the wall beside the door was a black metal cutout of a tree branch with the silhouette of a squirrel sitting on it. At the end of the branch was the number 26. Now we're on the next page. Go ahead, Uncle Charles told me. Push the doorbell. I did. I heard chimes ring. The door opened. There was Dad. There was Mom. 
Welcome home, they called. Here's your new house. I ran in. I ran up the stairs. I ran into my bedroom. There were two brand new beds, two brand new dressers, and on the wall, a mirror that looked like a ship's wheel. The beds were turned down, and there on the bed nearer the door were my pajamas. It was my bed. It was my room. It was my new house. It was my wonderful home, 26 Fairmount Avenue. The end for the time being. If you look at the very last page in this book, there is a note from the author, who is Tommy DePala. And we can go ahead and read this note together. Here's what he wrote. It says, over the years, letters from my young readers have increasingly asked, when are you going to write a chapter book? But the idea seemed daunting. That means overwhelming. Then one day, my longtime assistant, Bob Hechtel, said, I have an idea for a chapter book for you. In fact, for a series of chapter books. Why don't you write about all the things that you talk about from your childhood, but can't put into a single picture book? Ding! The bell went off. The light bulb lit. That's it, I said. Then the work began. It wasn't hard for me to conjure up all the clear memories I have and have had for years of my immediate family and all the friends and characters that surrounded me during my growing up years. Those memories were also reinforced by hours of home movies that my father and mother took, from little one-year-old Tommy all the way up to movies of me and my dancing partner, Carol Morrissey, with various family friend outings and siblings along the way. The real work was to suddenly expand my writing after years of being economical, which is essential for my picture books. But I started, and with the support of my also longtime friend and editor, Margaret Frith, I wrote in an almost stream of consciousness style. Margaret then helped me to organize all the material into this first book. Yes, there will be more. After all, my sisters haven't been born yet. The Second World War hasn't started. Enough. Meanwhile, I hope you'll enjoy sharing more of my early life with me, meeting lots of family and other old friends. Tommy. So as you heard there, Tommy said that there was going to be more books. And on the screen here, you can see all of the books that are in his 26 Fairmount Avenue series. So this was the first book. The second book is called Here We All Are. And then the third book is called On My Way. Then there's the book What a Year. Things Will Never Be the Same. I'm Still Scared. Why? And For the Duration. So if you really like this book, you might want to check out these. I also have them at school. So if you like this book, you'll probably like this whole series. And on my webpage, I have two links posted to these Tommy DePaula stories. These are short stories, short picture books that Tommy wrote. He wrote a book called Nana Upstairs and Nana Downstairs. And he also wrote a book called The Art Lesson. And both of these books are based on Tommy's childhood. And so if you would like to hear these short stories, you can go to my class website at the Read Aloud videos, find the link, and listen to these stories. I'm not the reader in the video, but um, another person is. But I bet if you listen to these stories, you will make some really good connections and hear some familiar things from 26 Fairmount Avenue. So I really suggest finding uh, the link and listening to these two really good stories. All right, find your packet and go to the last two pages in your packet. There aren't any chapter nine questions. Instead, you're going to start working on something different. Since we finished this book, now you're going to pick a book project to work on. And you have two choices. So one of your choices is the shoebox diorama. And the page in the back of your packet tells you all the directions for the shoebox di diorama. So you'll need a shoebox or another box that's similar to a shoebox. 
and you turn it on its side. And inside, you will decorate the box to look like a scene from the story. So you're going to think of maybe your favorite part of the book, and you're going to make that scene. You could use Play-Doh, you could use toys, you could use paper and crayons, but you want to create that scene. And then you're going to write a short paragraph about the scene. So explain what part of the book you made and why did you make that part? Why was that part important or why did you like that part? And then you can glue that paragraph to the back of your box or put it next to your box. You also want to put the title of the book and the author's name on uh, the box as well. So for example, I might get a shoe box like this and I'll put it on its side and maybe I want to do the part of the story where Tommy goes to the movie theater to see Snow White. So I would have to think, how could I make a movie theater? So maybe I could make some little benches or chairs and have Tommy sitting in one. So maybe I could use Legos to make that, or maybe I could use Play-Doh to make that. And then with paper, I could put a movie screen and I could draw Snow White on the movie screen. That might be a fun idea. Or maybe there's a different part of the story that you like. Maybe you want to do the part of the story with Tommy and Nana upstairs being tied to the chairs or you want to do the part where Tommy got to move into his new house, or maybe the part when Tommy's house was being built, or the fire in the backyard and everybody getting wet because mom sprayed them with the hose. So you get to pick what part of the story you want to make, and you're going to make that scene in a box. Your other choice, if you didn't want to do the diorama, you could do book in a box. So again, you're going to need a box, or it could be some sort of container, and you're going to decorate that box and put the name of the book on it and the author's name, and then inside the box, you're going to put eight different objects, and these eight objects have to be things from the story. So maybe think about Tommy, things that Tommy had, things that Tommy did, uh, think of different things that happen in the story. And then with those objects, if you don't have the object, you could put a picture of the object in the box, but you're also going to make a little note card to go with it. And on the note card, you're going to tell what the object is and then why that object is important for the book. So I might get a box. I'm going to decorate the box and then maybe I'm going to put some candy in the box. And on the note card, I would say that I'm putting candy in the box because Tommy would visit Nana upstairs and he would always look for candy in the sewing box. And maybe I'll also put some blue chalk in the box. And on my note card, I could say that I'm putting the blue chalk in because when Tommy's house was being built, he was able to use chalk to draw pictures on the walls before the plasterers came and covered it up. And maybe I have a Snow White DVD or Snow White book or picture, and I'll put that in the box because Tommy really likes the book Snow White, and he was really excited to go see that movie. But then he was also a little angry when he realized that the movie and the book were quite different. So those are just three ideas. I need to come up with eight things to put in the box. So really think about some things that happen in the story, things that Tommy did, things that Tommy used, things that Tommy had, and how you can put those things in the box or pictures of those things in the box. So go ahead, pick out which project you want to do and get started working on that. I can't wait to see you and I can't wait to see your book project. See you later, alligators.